Yeah, one, two, one, two, it's your boy BQ. Welcome to the Impact Lounge, and this is your Impact Wrestling review for the week. I am flying solo due to scheduling conflicts, mainly my fault, 100% my fault. So uh, TW wasn't able to join me this week as he did last week, but welcome. I'll do my best to give you a good review like I always do. This is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. So wherever you are at, consider being a valued subscriber. And give this video, if you're watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up. If you've never given a thumbs up before, maybe make this your first time. Because it is YouTube month for the Impact Lounge. And this is the part here. Many of my longtime listeners are tired of me talking about this. But this is the part where I say there were technical difficulties. And I was going to do this video format like I did last week. And everything was set up. And five seconds before hitting record, the video went out. And I've spent the last hour and a half trying to get it back up. I had a supervisor in the Air Force years ago that once told me, Q, if you didn't have bad luck, you wouldn't have luck at all. And that is damn true when it comes to me. I've had a lot of good luck, a lot of good karma in my life too, but I definitely am a man who experiences bad luck on a very regular basis. Like that Murphy's Law bad luck, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to talk about that. As I said, most of you are pretty tired of it. Let's Let's get into Impact and the episode that we just had this past uh, Tuesday. Um, but before before we get into that, actually, Impact made an announcement yesterday about the Impact in 60 was going to start airing on TV. And, you know, I did a little upload on YouTube about it, and a few people, you know, kind of corrected me or, or at least put me up on game that, well, Impact 60 and 60 already exists, and it's on the uh, Impact Plus app. So that's kind of... I would say that's news to me, but after that, someone said that, I'm like, you know what? I have seen that on the Impact Plus app, but the app has never been a priority as far as, you know, um, Impact really communicating to us why we should even watch the content on there. You know what I mean? They've, they spend so much time just thinking that if they give us old clips, that that's going to make us watch, you know? And no one's ever been like, hey, here's, here's what's on the app. Here's the different programs. Like if you didn't just scroll through yourself, you wouldn't even know what's on there. And I guess Impact and 60 plays in Canada as well. That's already on TV there. So I was told that they don't, you know, it's it just, there's no host or anything like that. It's just, they just, you know, play the program. And from what understanding, a few people seem to like it. But I feel, I could be very wrong in this. I feel like if they're going to, put this on in the United States, that they're going to change the format up a little bit. That's no knock on, you know, the programming in Canada or anything like that. But obviously in the United States is where they're trying to increase their viewership. That's where they have the problems. So I feel like they would change the format up a little bit. But who knows? Um, I, I was under the impression at first that this was going to air before Impact. And was kind of like a good way of leading into the current Impact product. But it's actually going to be After. So I'm going to say rest in peace to Aftershock. You know, Aftershock, as I said on my last YouTube upload, was a complete bomb. And I said it was going to be. You know, I talk about this stuff on the on the, on the the channel. And I always get people like, man, you BQ, you shoot down everything Impact does. You're so negative when they make these announcements. And, you know, I always try to point out when I, when I, when I am negative about something, I always give, a, give the why I am and usually post some kind of solution or what I would do different. And that's, that's constructive criticism, not so much just being negative, you know? Um, but I do feel like I have a good grasp on content and what content works and what content doesn't work, you know, because that's something that I have before I ever started podcasting. That's something that I've, I I studied for years, 
you know? So when I got to get on here, like, I'm not just the, you know, the fat dude in someone's basement in my mom's basement talking about wrestling. Like I'm, I'm, I have educated myself on this kind of stuff and I'm not fat by the way, but that is, I've educated myself on that stuff. So when they said, Hey, we're coming out with aftershock. I said, man, that shit's not going to work. It's a kayfabe review show. And you're either appealing to the people who already watch the show and have no reason to watch it, watch the after show, or you're appealing to people who didn't watch the show and probably aren't going to watch it now because you're giving them the results on this show here. You know, and I've al- I also pointed out that they have tried this many times and it's never worked. So I had a few people tell me, well, I think it'll still be on YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that. But are you really going to put two shows up against each other? You know, the after show and then the impact and 60. I don't really see that. And then the after show is only really relevant if it happens right after the after impact airs on Tuesday. Um, it's kind of like these reviews. Uh, they're only really relevant for a handful of days. And then, you know, I don't really get traffic on them after that. I mean, why? They're, they're old. You know what I mean? So I think uh, Aftershock, you know, was a bomb. If you look at the, the YouTube numbers, it's by far the lowest viewed content piece on their channel. I mean, by far. And, uh, you know, another point I brought up on my upload yesterday was if you go back to the first episode of NWA, first episode of AEW, first episode of NXT when it was on television, when, you know, the new television deal, um, the first week of the XFL, the first final deletion, that's always been where the biggest audience is because people watch out of curiosity. And then from there it goes down, uh, pretty drastically in most cases. And all those examples I gave you, you can look at the numbers. They're all numbers easily accessible. So, they, they did the Aftershock show, and, you know, 7,000 peop- 7, people hits, seven, excuse me, 7,000 hits on YouTube, and now today it has like 12,000. The second episode had something like 4,000 after the first night, so you're talking about a 3,000 drop, and it's probably not going to hit 12,000, it's probably going to hit 8 or 9, you know, and less, so less and less people are going to watch you know, and some people were optimistic. Oh, you know, it was okay. You know, it can get better. Well, that's the problem. It's, it's, you know, you guys know that, that saying you never have a, I don't even remember the exact wording, but the first impression saying <laughs> you don't have a second chance to make a first impression. And, uh, you know, you can't go into an episode one with something and be like, oh, we don't got all our boxes checked. We're just going to kind of give them some content and then get better later. It just doesn't work like that. So, um, I think quietly after shock will be gone because, uh, impact and 60 is going to air after impact on June 2nd, starting June 2nd. So I think we're going to get like one more episode of aftershock and then they're going to pretend that it was never a thing. I, that's just what I think. Maybe they still try to air it on Twitch or YouTube. I don't see the point because you want people to watch impact and six, you know, you know what I'm saying? You want them to watch impact and 60. You don't really want them to watch aftershock. If you're putting them, you know, if you're prioritizing them is what I'm getting at. So that's that. Uh, Let's talk impact now. Um, We kick off with Ace Austin beating Rhino. Now, if you remember, Ken Shamrock was in this spot. And this side of the bracket was already really weak in comparison to the other. And I actually picked Shamrock to win this thing. I thought, you know what? They're going to they're going to go with Shamrock getting a world title shot. I think that they feel Ken Shamrock is more of a, a draw than he is because his contract, you know, when he showed up last year, whatever he showed up at um, Bound for Glory. Right. I'm thinking this is a one off. And then I'm thinking, OK, he's going to show up for a set of tapings after that. And then there was a thing where Madman Fulton like assaulted in him. And I was like, oh, you know. He just wrote him up off TV. That's brilliant, you know? <laughs> and then he showed up the next week 
And then he was booked for the next pay-per-view and the next pay-per-view after that. And he's going to be on the next. I'm like, he must have at least signed a year contract, you know? And I remember when the rumor came out, not the rumor, but it was, yeah, I guess it was a rumor. It came out and it said, uh, you know, Ken Shamrock is in talk with Impact Wrestling. Someone posted this on Facebook in one of the groups. And I responded, I said, to do what? You know, I, I never in my wildest dreams thought he was actually going to wrestle. Especially not this much. You know, um, I'm not saying I want him out of the company or anything like that. You know, he does offer something. But I think um, Impact treats him like a bigger draw than he, he really is. At this point in his life, at this point in his career, you know. So, um, he was taken out of this match by Michael Elgin. I didn't, the way they did it on Madison Rain's segment, I didn't really like care for it. I thought it was kind of forced. And the way Michael Elgin's like, that, the title's mine, you know, it's it was just cheesy. And it, it's funny because later in the, in the mat, later in the evening, Sammy Callahan wrestles injured, but Ken Shamrock is unable to wrestle because he's injured. Now, granted, they're different injuries, you know, you're, talking you hit him in the head with a chair so maybe there's a concussion but clearly they're trying to lead a shamrock versus michael elgin which michael elgin can have a good match with anyone so i'm not totally turned off by it but i really felt with this tournament they should have just focused on the matches and not trying to build like storylines within the tournament and you know i'm going to make this comparison i'm sure you know many of you don't like when myself or TW compare other companies, I, well, I know you don't because you tell me in the comments, but you know, AEW has the tournament right now, the TNT championship. And, you know, every single wrestler got a very serious video package. Uh, I think before every match, actually, even no matter the round on why that title, why they had to win that title, why it meant something to them. And it was something that said, you know what impact could have done this. All they really did was have Rohit and Elgin act like they needed to win the tournament. Everyone else was just kind of there. You know, so that's something I, I really would like to see. But even with their tournament, though, like they just focused on each individual person basically looking stronger with each round. You feel me? Um, and with this tournament, it was like they were, they were too a little too concerned on trying to further storylines within it, which I get it's wrestling. You want to further storylines, but when you're sitting here and we're, okay, we're going to do, we're going to get Rohit even a little more pissed off. We're going to start building this, uh, you know, uh, Elgin and Shamrock thing. Okay, cool. But in the process, you're making some of the other matches and some of the other stars kind of mean nothing, you know, but, this match here, Ace Austin versus Rhino. Uh, I almost thought Rhino was going to win this thing. <laughs> but um, Ace Austin is someone who I didn't think should have lost the X Division Championship. I thought he was... He's really coming into his own. You know, I didn't like him when he first came to Impact. I was like, dude, did they go out and look for the most vanilla person possible and, and sign him? You know, that's how, that's how I looked at him. Um, but now he's, I mean, he's grown so freaking much and his character is great. I, I don't like the fit with Reno scum, but I like them together. That I know that doesn't make any sense. I just love Reno scum. So I like them being a part of something big, but they feel off that on, on screen, you know, they don't look like they fit. So I don't even know if they're still. You know, when, when when everything returns back to normal, what's going to happen with that? But Ace Austin wins the match, and he's going to take on Hernandez in the next round. And we're we'll we'll get you know what we'll get to some predictions a little bit later because I want to you know obviously I got got to get into Sammy versus Elgin. Let's get into Sammy versus Elgin right now, as a matter of fact, because this is the the big match. This is the main event. So let, let's get into that right now. So Sammy wrestles, Sammy Callahan takes on Michael Elgin. I've said this, and many people have said this. It should have been the finals. You know, if you were building to Sammy versus Elgin, I think 
people would have been really uh, much more invested in it, in the whole tournament in general. But, you know, for the most part, the tournament wasn't that bad. You know, I'm, obviously, I'm kind of nitpicking at it. But, you know, for the most part, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was pretty good, actually. But we get this match. And I go back to what I was saying earlier. We can't clear Ken Shamrock, but Sammy is wrestling injured. And I, I thought selling the ankle. I'm curious what you guys think of this. I thought selling the ankle was kind of unnecessary. Because he injured that ankle like three weeks ago. And it was because the ankle lock was on for, you know, uh, a couple minutes. If, if even that, I don't even know. I doubt it was on that long. It just probably felt like it. But I thought selling the ankle was a little unnecessary. What would have made more sense was OVE attacking Sammy. You know, because OVE never retaliated. That's, that's a... Uh, that's bad storytelling there. But OBE never retaliated. I would have it would have just made more sense if you know Fulton and and Dave and Jake attacked him before the match. Or attacked him last week even. But you're selling it uh the ankle. I mean, you're going to tell me Sammy really can't walk on that ankle from you know 3 weeks ago. And if it was borderline broken, then he shouldn't have been clear to compete. You know what I mean? So but this match, I think, was everything we all expected. Um, I would have liked to see Sammy get a little more offense in. And I asked this question. I posed this question to you. Is Sammy transitioning to a baby face? Because this was a very random, like, heel versus heel match. But Sammy kind of wrestled the match as a baby face. And if you even think that he almost sh- uh, shook Ken Shamrock's hand after that loss... I almost feel like they tried to, uh, when you know, when Shamrock won at Rebellion, everyone was like, what the hell's going on here? I feel like they were going for the sympathy thing. We're going to, you know, we're going to start building sympathy towards Sammy. And that's why they had him selling this injury too. But I don't really think that's working. I think that's, I, I think that's over people's heads right now. I don't think it's working at all. I think the majority of us still kind of see him as the vile Sammy Callahan, like, you know, Josh Matthews says. I think that's how we see him. So uh, I don't think they're building any kind of sympathy for him right now. And if they're trying to make him a baby face, I think they're doing it in a weird way. But it's, it's it appears to kind of be like a slow burn because you can't do Sammy overnight, you know, as a baby face. I don't think you can do him as a baby face at all, personally, but we'll see what they're you know, what the end game is with this, but Michael Elgin wins and he wins clean. And, you know, I I really think a lot of us probably expected Shamrock to cost Elgin this match. I thought that was like telegraphed really well, actually, but we were wrong or I was wrong. You know, this this was a a clean match, which is good because in in a tournament, we should just get all clean matches. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have all that nonsense. But this was one of those matches, you're looking at it, and you're like, there's no way we're getting a clean winner out of this, a decisive winner. Here's my problem. Sammy Callahan, unless there's another match here that I'm unfamiliar with, is he 0-2 since the the gimmick change? Since the ICU, since that, you know, months of of hacking, and and then he comes back to wrestling. Is he he 0-2? That, uh... OBE losing streak continues. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, I love his music though, man. I, I've said this before. Like his music is killing it. That's that's a really great th- song. But it's it feels like a babyface theme song. So, you know, I do think I feel like that's what they're going with uh, our boy Sammy. But let's uh let's let's go back to the top of the show. You know, Ace Austin beats Rhino. Elgin beats Sammy. So we're gonna get. Elgin versus Trey, which I I just would have rather seen Rohit there. Because you can only make Rohit lose so much before he comes off as a loser on television. Like, Trey had no business winning that match. He didn't need the win. So if Rohit would have won, I just, I just, I feel like Impact Creative should have said, you know what, let's throw him, let's throw this at the wall and see if it sticks. Let's put him... Because this match is going to be the main event next week, Elgin versus Trey, right? Let's see what 
Rohit can do in the main event. You know, clearly Elgin is going to win this match. At least if Rohit was there, we would have got some like, you know, is is he getting a push? You know, we would have we would have you know, internally we would be thinking, is he getting a push? Is he going to find a way to get past Elgin? Like we know Trey's not going to beat Michael Elgin. Um and then on the other side we're getting Ace Austin versus Hernandez, which man, that doesn't scream semifinals of a match uh, of a world title tournament in any way. Ace should win this match, but I can't imagine they're going to do Ace versus Elgin. You know, that doesn't sound like something they're going to do. Like they're not going to go heel for heel versus heel in the finals. Um and they're giving like Hernandez this weird push. So I really think we're going to get Hernandez versus Elgin. And El- this shouldn't even be a tournament, to be honest with you, because Elgin, just because that world title match didn't happen, it doesn't mean that Elgin and Eddie Edwards lose their positions. So that's that's the odd thing. I really would have preferred to see the tur- winner of the tournament wrestle Michael Elgin for the number one contendership. I think that would have made a little more sense. But I think Elgin clearly wins this thing. There's There's like no money in Hernandez versus... Uh, Tessa, you know, but at the same time, they are trying to do this Shamrock and Elgin thing, so maybe they throw a curveball at us. Moose is talking with Josh Matthews about the match with Suicide. Josh Matthews is wearing the same outfit as he was last week. Him and Madison have had the same outfits on for weeks, and Madison Rain looks phenomenal, by the way, in the in that outfit, but. Those are those little details. You know, if you're trying... Here's the thing. The reason a lot of people were really drawn to AEW when it came out is not because it's like the best wrestling show in the world. A lot of people stop watching WWE. And when you do that, and you say, okay, I'm going to be done watching WWE, so I'm going to watch Impact and Ring of Honor and these shows. The problem, these are all taped broadcasts. Even NXT at, at one point, you know? These are taped tape shows and when they're taped you know that you're not going to see anything nothing's going to just like come out of left field on you because live television is very unpredictable you can't really get that unpredictable with tape television so that's why a lot of the times you know people are just like i you know impact and ring of honor is cool but i just you know they tape you know there's some people who are just not into that Again, because it's just not, you're not going to get that unpredictability with it because of spoilers and things like that. So if you can't do that, you have to present, you have to do your best to present the show as if, as if it is live. So when you have every single week, these two wearing the same exact outfit, that's, that's telling us it's live, it's recorded. And I don't want to say the casual fan, but someone who maybe is not a, diehard wrestling fan who doesn't know any better you know to them it's live right you you know and you know i've talked about this in the past uh there was a there was a probably up until 2013 or 14 i wasn't someone who i just watched wrestling on tv i wasn't someone who read dirt sheets or went online and read about wrestling because I had other interests that I, I spent my internet time looking into. I did. I never did that for wrestling for years. Like, like no shit until about 2014 or so. So I, I didn't even know that SmackDown was. Because I you know at this time I was watching WWE too. I didn't know SmackDown wasn't live for a while. I didn't know that NXT wasn't live. There was a time I didn't know TNA wasn't live. You know. And many of you obviously knew that because you were, you know, most of your people who are in the dirt sheets and in the columns online and and, I, and in the groups and stuff. And I wasn't. I just watched wrestling on TV. That was it. So my point is, I know I'm kind of like rabbit trailing here, but it's just because I'm trying to, you know, really hammer this home. I, I, you talk about going all in, then go all in. And if it's a new episode, change your outfit, you know. But Moose talks to Josh here. 
Moose at least removes his jacket to where he looks like he was wearing a different outfit. Like the previous week he had a, a jacket, a sports coat over that black shirt. So it looked like these were, you know, the videos were done at two different times, the interviews. Clearly they were recorded back to back. But, you know, change, you know, change the little things so it appears like this is a live broadcast. Because the people who aren't the diehards are going to start picking up on that stuff. Maybe some of you think it doesn't matter. I do. I think I think the little things matter. Crazy Steve takes on Dave Christ. Dave Christ loses because OVE always loses. And after the match, Fulton loses it. Takes out, you know, pushes Dave, pushes, pushes Jake. And I'm glad they didn't like completely split them up. Because I want Dave and Jake to return to the tag team division. We forget that they're part of the tag team division. That's the, the crazy thing. We completely forget. They don't even talk about them as you know contenders. And they're former champions. But Fulton turns on him. And here, here's the thing. like Fulton also lost all his matches in the last several months. He, he, he lost uh, to, to Hernandez. You know, just not long ago. So the way that they did it where like Fulton was like frustrated and like, I'm done with you guys. It, it's, I, I, I get it because Fulton has some star potential. And if he's done the right way, like he, he's not going to be part of a new decay. That's not, that's not going to happen. Like they're going to break him out. They're going to find a, a role where they can really showcase him. But I think OV, breaking up OVE was unnecessary. I mean, it was necessary because of the way they've been booked, but there was a lot of legs that, you know, if they were a winning team and a winning faction, whether Sammy was involved or not, like they try to say they're losing because Sammy's not around. I'm like, they've been losing. You know, so if they were like presented better, uh, they were really a victim of the Tessa Blanchard thing where, where these guys refused to have Tessa Blanchard lose. And when she starts bringing on, okay, uh, Tommy Dreamer one week and Rhino the next and Randos, and they're still beating this team who've been wrestling together their entire lives, it hurt. It did hurt them. So uh, at least we're getting some movement in this. At least this isn't just OVE losing every week. Now we have something that says, okay. The storyline is evolving. What is going to happen? Now, OVE didn't even, as a trio, did not attack Sammy Callahan. So, is OVE as a duo going to attack Mad Mad Fulton? Or are they just going to like all go their separate ways? Here's what I didn't like, too. After this happened, like there should have been some... Unless I fast-forwarded through this by accident or something... I didn't see a backstage segment after this. There should there should have been something, just like last week. They did it last week when Crazy Steve walked up and everything. There should have been some kind of follow-up on this, and there wasn't. That I saw, at least. If, I, if I'm wrong, let me know, please. But I didn't see any kind of follow-up. Um, what happened after this? Oh, you know what? I forgot. Joey Ryan came out. And, you know, it, it appears that it, it, it's... Kind of a Joey Ryan versus they they kind of they kind of looked seemed like they got away from the cancel culture versus Deaners thing. We never got that tag team match. I mean, for obvious reasons, but it seems like they're kind of moving on from it. So I don't know if Joey Ryan. I feel like he's he's working a program here with Steve here soon. But some people brought up, you know, maybe he actually recruits OVE to be part of cancel culture. You know, but do we want Dave and Jake to be another part of another large stable? Nah, I'd rather see them as a tag team start winning some matches and get on a roll. I still think they, they need some kind of leader, though. Uh, and I still I still kind of stand by my prediction of the Dark Horse leader being Madison Rain. Again, listen to the commentary during this match. Go back and watch the match and listen to it. it it's There's something... You know, TW told me last week, you're pretty good at, you know, seeing the tea leaves. That's, I feel like I, I, 
if you really listen to the commentary, there's something in there. Again, I could be wrong as all hell, but I could see her leading Jake and Dave more than I could Jake, Dave, and Fulton. You know, because then you'd have to really repackage Madison. But let me not fantasy book too much. I, but 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 I I still think it's a possibility. The Rosemary and Johnny Bravo segment. I actually like this one. You know, I've been saying that I I don't enjoy the Rosemary stuff, and I don't. And I usually think they go on too long. And the more she kind of talks, the more I get confused. But this um, now that look like they're kind of going a romance segment. And even though it's like comedy, Johnny Bravo is funny. And I've always talked about funny people being funny and not and people who aren't funny being funny. There's a big difference, you know, like Don Callis is not funny. Josh Matthews is not funny. Um, I'm just using them as examples right now because there's some wrestlers also who are not funny. But they're not funny people and they're trying to be funny. Then you got like, you know, Johnny Bravo, you know, go look at a guy like Eli Drake or something. These are funny people. So they can, they can pull off comedy. So this, this works a little bit more for me now that they're, that he's involving himself in this. And I'm curious to see where the, where this goes. Triple XL takes on TJP and Falaba. Really good match. Uh, we got three big dudes out there and then TJP and, uh, I enjoy the presentation of triple XL. They're, they're not a comedy team. They're not like a couple big dudes that are just there for comedy. You know, like they, they're very serious. They come down, uh, and AC Romero, I wasn't totally feeling as a singles competitor, but putting him in this tag team here, like this, this works. I really think this works. And TJP and Falaba, I'm really glad that they changed his pants and they and now they kind of look alike. You know, that works for me too. So these are the two teams that I think are probably at the top right now of the division. I guess you can throw the Rascals in there too. But Impact's tag division is actually better than people are giving it credit for. And the you know the one thing people talk about with AEW is the tag team wrestling. And for the record, I hate their tag team wrestling. I hate the way they pre- present tag team wrestling with passion. I much prefer their single stuff. But people always talk about, you know, this tag team division is the best. And, the, and, and that was the focus of AEW. This is an area where I do think Impact can compete. Because they do have an excellent tag division. You know, you, you got you to gotta get... OBE on board a little bit with some wins. You got to get Reno Scum some wins because they're a lot better than we realize they are too. You know, we got to get different teams with some some momentum. And if you are able, I still think it's a long shot. Most, you know, a lot of people think that there's a good opportunity to get them. I still think it's a long shot. But if they get Gallows and Anderson, it catapults this tag team division leaps and bounds. And the only reason that I think they have a chance at them is that I don't think AEW can fit any more tag teams. They're most likely going to bring uh, Dawson and Wilder, uh, the Revival dudes. They're most likely going there. The, those two are not coming to Impact. <laughs> I know that much. So if you bring them there, I don't think them getting Gallows and Anderson is going to be very doable. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but Gallows and Anderson were going to sign with TNA before WWE gave them the offer. You know, because you remember uh, AJ Styles was going to return. And then, uh, because he really wanted to come back to the States. Like, he he loved Japan, but he wanted to come back to the States. And he was going to do it for TNA, but WWE came with that offer. But, you know, they were going to sign Gallows and Anderson. So there's there's been some dialogue there, even if it was with, you know, Dixie Carter, but... There's some there's some dialogue there, and obviously Demore knows them. But if if they able to bring these guys, and I really think the Ascension uh, would be really great in Impact, because you know when I watch AEW and I AEW NXT years ago, and they were like the dominant tag team, I loved these dudes. 
and then it got called up and became immediate jokes. And, and people forget that they're a really good team. So I really think if you bring in those guys and then you bring in Gallows and Anderson, if, if, if you're able to sign him, this tag team division is now up there. Because if you look at Santana and Ortiz and the Lucha Brothers, Impact booked them way better. They felt way more special in Impact than they do on AEW. I feel I don't want to say I feel bad because Santana Ortiz are probably making more money and they're getting more exposure. They're part of a main event angle. But those dudes do not feel as special as Impact made them feel. So I really think this is a space. I always say Impact can compete with the women, and the women's division is getting crazy now. But the but the tag team division, they they can make this one of the reasons to watch Impact. You know, they talk about the Wednesday night wars and all there's some Monday night wars. Like you can you can actually go to war with AEW in this in this area. Let's try to outdo our tag team wrestling. Try to outdo our women's wrestling. You know? Obviously with ratings and all that crap, no, they can't go to war as a, as a whole, as a program. But when it comes to the actual matches, they can go to war in that and, and create some buzz. But this tag team division has potential to get up there. TJP and Falaba win this match. They're clearly building these guys to take on the North, which is fine. They beat them in a non-title match. And you you got to give Impact props for the way they have handled Falaba. He was a comedy character. No other company would know what to do with him. No other company. And they were able to take him from a comedy character who didn't speak to a serious wrestler who competes and speaks. And obviously that match with Austin Aries laid the groundwork for that. And that's what I was saying with like Rohit. Like, put him in the main event, see what he can do. Put him up against Tessa. See what he can do in the main event. Moose takes on Suicide. Again, this is another competitive match between the two. The last match was competitive. This was competitive. I didn't really want to see it again. I feel like this Suicide was not the one from last week, though. Or at least not the one from a couple weeks ago. You know, when his hair was coming out the bottom. And the rumor is that Zach Wentz has been playing suicide. This suicide looked more like Caleb Conley. Because he was he was a little bigger. And Wentz is taller and thinner, you know? I felt like this looked like the old suicide. We would have known better if he was wearing the suicide outfit that they used a couple years ago. But it looked like him. And I, I swear, I don't know if I dreamt it. I talked about this before. I could have swore... Conley posted on social media that he was doing the impact tapings. But Conley wasn't the initial uh, original suicide from a couple of weeks ago. But this one, lo- he looked shorter. Not not by a lot, but he looked a little shorter and bigger. And he looked like Conley's mannerisms. Because I was looking at his mannerisms and I was like, Th- those aren't Wentz's in-ring mannerisms. You know, just the way he was like kind of clenching his fist. You know, because like, Conley does that. So, the the question remains, is Suicide going to be unmasked at some point and be someone from TNA's past? Lewis seems to think it's Chris Saban. And at first I thought that was ridiculous. I didn't tell him that. <laughs> Sorry, dude. But now as time goes on, I'm like, you know what? I think he's going to end up as someone. I think they're going to unmask him. And I, I think it could be Saban. I don't think it's Saban now. There's no there's no point in having him wrestle right now with Suicide. None. If he doesn't have a, you know, if he's got a mask on, there's no point in it being him. But when it comes down to it, m- maybe it is. You know? But at the same time, you have to sell us that Saban was the person under the mask the entire time. And Moose has beat him twice. Now, yeah, they weren't super clean, but he still beat him twice. So just because he unmasks himself and he's someone from TNA's past, but now that makes him more viable to beat Moose? I don't think so. So they're going to do something with this suicide thing because him being in the main event and all that shit, like, (laughs) 
when when he was Caleb Conley a couple of years ago, like he was just there to lose matches and to take take you know eat pins and multi man matches, and now all of a sudden this dude's in the main event, and they're treating him like a bigger deal. So we'll see what they do with this uh, suicide thing. Mac takes on Swinger. I had you guys already know I had zero interest in this. Uh, when I went to the Lucha Underground versus Impact show. The crowd was so, and the crowd was like a good 60%, 70% there for Lucha Underground. They were so behind Willie Mack. And it seemed like the minute he comes to Impact, he's just an Impact guy and loses all that momentum all, all, all of a sudden. You know, it's crazy. But the Swinger thing, okay, I'm going to say this first of all. Keep Swinger away from Chris Bay. Like Chris Bay is going to be a star in the X Division. He's probably going to be the next X Division champion. Keep, keep Swinger away from him. I hope that now that this happened, though, that they find a way to really put a fork in this thing. But the thing was, Willie Mack wins, and he wins with the backflip. You know, he didn't use his finisher, so I think that's awesome. You know, anytime some, anytime a match ends with something other than a finisher or a roll-up, I, I get pretty excited. <laughs> but Mack wins this thing, and then Chris Bay comes back or comes out and, and jumps him, and you know they're they're now delivering Chris Bay really well. I was really worried after the first couple of weeks and the way they were presenting him. But now I like this. I'm digging it. And him and Willie Mack are going to have a really nice rivalry and have some good matches. But keep uh, keep Johnny Swinger out of this, please. He has no, no business being in the X Division. But Willie Mack does win this thing. The North segment backstage, there's, you know, Josh, Ma- not Josh Matthews, Josh Alexander's kind of like, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, he adds a necessary seriousness to what's going on. Ethan Page is, is showing a lot of charisma in these segments, though. And I've said before, I think he would be an excellent world champion. You know, Lewis talked about Josh Alexander being a world champion one day. And yeah, he's got that potential, but, but, you have to believe if Ethan Page became the world champion one day that he would take off like EC3 did. You know, he's he he has everything. He's one of the few wrestlers right now who's Im- improved his brand in this whole uh, pandemic thing. He has done so much creative stuff with his YouTube and on his social media and Twitch and Facebook. And, and like, I'm just becoming a bigger fan of his every day based on that stuff because I love seeing that kind of stuff and I've said before that he needs to be in charge not do the content but he needs to be in charge of impact social media and YouTube because he fucking gets it he gets it I mean to where he was able to pull off these segments comedy segments but he he knew Josh Alexander you got to be serious during these for this to work you know you can't turn Josh Alexander into a comedy character so he it, it there's a yin and yang, and it, it grounds Ethan Page a little bit to where it just comes off as you know funny but not too cheesy. Now, again, the first match against the Creeps or whatever gets gets a 0 out of 10 for me. I hated that. But last week, the one that they had, I liked. That actually made me laugh. And then this, too, I kind of dug as well. And now it's going somewhere. Cody Diener appears, and... We're going to get a Diener compound match with a mystery partner. And then Cam's going to be the referee for it. Trust me on this one, folks. And you guys probably already, many of you probably already know this. This is going to be a cinematic match. I'm I'm, I'm sure of it. And I think we're going to get a couple more cinematic, you know, because we got the Sammy and, and uh, Shamrock one. Because I really think after that Boneyard match came out, Impact was like, oh, we got to get back to our cinematic matches so people remember that we do this. So I think that... uh. He's going to do, uh, they're going to do that. I think it's going to be a cinematic match. And I think we're going to see a lot of that in wrestling. Uh, that this weekend they're doing the um, stadium stampede match with AEW. That's going to be, I'm I'm calling it right now. If you guys watch that company, that's going to be a cinematic match. Because they're going to try to outdo WWE. Trust me on that one. Uh, but, but I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with this. Now, you know, Lewis did a podcast where he was really excited. Who's going to challenge the North? And we got the creeps, you know, and he was really disappointed. I was really disappointed. It's like, damn, there's so much talent in Canada. Like you had an opportunity to actually do something. 
you know, maybe now this is interesting because, you know, Cody is going to need a partner. He's kind of teasing that it's going to be a good talent, you know, and it could be Aiden Prince or something like that, which would, which would be fine, you know, but hopefully we're getting something, uh, you know, serious where he's introducing a new start of the company and we get a really good match. So then we're going to get this next week. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Josh and Madison talk in the same clothes and then just, and then we go to, the, to, this is getting into the main event here. I already, already talked about this. When the hell did they announce that there was a $100 gift card for your tournament brackets? You know, I've unfollowed their Facebook and I've unfollowed their YouTube, but I still follow their Twitter and Instagram. If I miss this, I just missed it, I guess. You know what I mean? But Josh was just like, oh, you know, how's your bracket? The winner gets a $100 gift card. Like, th that's definitely the first time they've said it on television. Like, they could have really pushed that. You know, if I missed it and I'm, I cover Impact, how many other people missed it? You know, like, that's actually something that you really could have got some engagement going with. If, if that was really pushing, you push, you know, push that shit on television, have a, have a little graphic and all that stuff. Like, make that a big deal. Unless it's a joke. Unless he was joking, but I don't think he was joking. But this is the first time I'm hearing of it. And again, I cover this company on YouTube almost every single day. So if I missed it, other people missed it. You know, just because I unfollowed their YouTube, I know there wasn't anything on there. You know, it's possible it was announced on Facebook. I just, I had to stop following that page because it's too troll heavy. And I'm just I'm done with it. And I'm tired of what they post as content. So um, let me know. Let me know if like w bring me up to snuff on this because this this was absolute news to me. But that's gonna do it for the review. Thanks for swinging by, and we're we're getting into the swing of things here. You know, we had the total nonstop impact guys for a long time. You know, putting on an entertaining show, and uh, they're doing really good things right now. You know, for me. I was, I've never been about, let me entertain you with my podcast. So, so I'm, I'm different. I'm more analytical and, uh, you know, most of you still ride with me for it, but I know what I'm, what I bring as a podcast is very different than what they brought. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, TW and I are going to get into the, the swing of things here. You know, hopefully we get past these technical issues and all that because him and I are going to deliver some really good podcasts. Uh, with, with a lot of really honest feedback and you know I'm going to continue just kind of break things down in ways that I I don't know that everyone else is in their brain necessarily you know because I, I enjoy that analytical type of thing I listen to a lot of sports podcasts because I'm a big um I'm a major NBA fan and you know and I'm an NFL fan too but like with the NBA I listen to all sorts of podcasts and then like for NFL, I just listen to when people talk about the Chargers. But because, you know, they're they're analyzing, they're breaking down plays, and, and they're saying, hey, this is why these two players fit and why those two players don't fit or why this team is not constructed correctly. Like, I, you know, and you start bringing up stats and all that. Like, that's all really interesting to me. So that's the kind of mindset I have with Impact when I, when I review Impact, you know, so... I'm not going to, you know, have that real entertaining podcast or whatever, but, you know, we're going to give you good, good content when it comes to reviewing this stuff. And, uh, I'm going to get everything handled here sooner than later. And I'm hoping next week, me and TW will be able to have a good, uh, video style podcast with no technical problems, no, no issue. So thanks for listening. Once again, I am your boy BQ and I'm out. Peace. <laughs>